Hey everybody, welcome back to another recap of 90 Day Fiance The Other Way here on YouTube with Jaden XD. Uh, we are doing episode 19 mm -hmm. of season 5 called Owing Pains. Um, Nasty word. I don't... Yeah, it, that's what it should have been called. <laughs> yep. Um, by... Uh, you know, a whole family with the same name. Or the audacity of news. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, where would you like to start uh, this week? Um, oof. Let's start with uh, Harry Potter and Mary. All right. Okay. So we meet with her, and she's calling on Jesus, um, Jesu Cristo, uh, because her and um, Michael Sarah got into a fight mm -hmm. about uh, money, you know, which, you know, biggest thing people fight about. Like, it's a huge thing, so I, I totally get that. Um, what the fight was about, we learn in a little bit, but... We, you know, she's supposed to get married to Michael, Sarah, the next day, but mm -hmm. she's unsure because, you know, what do I do? I'm not sure because we had a fight. This nigga won't stop the, playing Sega. Right. This was over the light bill. Mm -hmm. So her grandmother got the light bill, got the Con Ed bill and was like, mm -hmm. who paying us? <laughs> right. Because it ain't about to be me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he, she was trying to figure out where the money was going to come from. And he was like, well, you need to budget better. He put the honest and the blame on Mary, the pregnant fiance. Yeah. Of his. Who's very pregnant you know. now at this point. Very, very pregnant. And I get it. You know, since you financed the whole operation, you feel as though you're an overseer. However, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, he's he's imploring his overseer ways. No, like he I, is. He's like, yeah. you, tend to the oxes while I sit here yes. and give me some mm -hmm. iced tea. <laughs> mm -hmm. Scrub my royal balls. You know, Make that me kind of thing. Uh, lumpia and, and yeah. adobo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All of that. Yeah. So... You know, his mama came to go try to talk to her. Because remember, she promised him that she would try to try mm -hmm. to not treat her like a jackal. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, so she goes and, you know, Mary, Mary tells her the real deal. Like, you know, we've been trying to work this shit out. You know, we shit's been smooth sailing. But your son is a piece of motherfucker. Yeah, work. your son's a shiftless nigga. Yeah. And his mama was like, yeah, girl, I know. Yeah, it's I my know. fault, but I yeah, know. girl, I know. <laughs> She's like, girl, and, in video games, it's been a lifelong yeah. battle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, they, they, you know, find some common ground over um, the shiftlessness of this nigga that they mm -hmm. both love. Yeah. So, you know... His mother talks about her her reservations about them getting married. And she was like, mm -hmm. not just because you were a bitch. Don't think that's not one. That was one of the things because that totally was. <laughs> but also, y'all niggas don't have a life plan. Like, I know for a fact my son is broke because I made him broken. So therefore, I know he is not capable of ca of of doing this. Yeah. And so I'm he was nervous. Like he was able to send y'all money for this house because he played in installments. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, you know, here is where she's like, yes, my son's fucked up. I get it. I get it. You know, however, she asks her, she tells Mary, like, listen, I can't tell you what to do mm -hmm. as much as I want to because y'all going to big fat do it anyway. Yeah. So... All I'm going to ask you is, can you see yourself raising this baby without him? Can you live without this white man? Yeah. And, you know, and I guess that's what it boils down to. I mean, you know, pretty much. And she was like, you know, no, no. Yeah, because it'd always be like that. It'd be like, 
She's like, no. for one, I'm gonna have to explain why he looked like that. Yeah, or that's a lot like of that. why they look like that. Yeah, it's a mm. lot of it's a lot of explaining. You know, you have if, to talk about colonization. Yeah. It's a lot of historical referencing you have to do. Granted, it is the Philippines, and you know it. It's a lot happening. Again, a lot more historical <laughs> reference. <laughs> you know, because the U.S. military loves to go up and shoot up the club. In more ways than one. Mm. All right, who shall we go on to? That's <laughs> true. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that was them. <laughs> uh, let's loops. move on to Danielle and Johan. I thought she was going to want to end. Actually, no. I think I know no. who you want to end with. <laughs> oh, you already know who yeah. I want to end with. Um, next week, I could tell you we can end with them. Because that is that is some that Cut is that some shit! Mess. Cut it! What are they building? I don't art? know, nigga. A city? You know? <laughs> <laughs> You know, I hate these motherfuckers. Like, what is happening? <laughs> oh my it sounds like, um, I don't know, it, maybe you and Noah and Tristan might have a family game night and get a Monopoly on the Switch. Oh. And it's, oh yeah, it's a good time. And they have live interaction boards. So like, like say you land on baltic street or whatever the fuck and then they have a little animation where you see the people all like the niggas like building shit and then when you add like houses and stuff they have they you see the niggas building you have a complete apartment and then when you put a hotel in like and it's cute because it's real classes so like when you put a hotel on like baltic avenue you know the poor streets it's like it looks like a little cheap like red you know, red roof in yeah. type of situation. Yeah. But when you put a hotel over on Park Place, it looks like the fucking Venetian. Palazzo. So, <laughs> yeah, it looks like the Fairmont. So I'm Ooh. like, oh, I love this. I shout out to classism. It's cute and fun. I will tell you but, what uh, I just bought for our family game night. Uh, what's it called? Uno Attack. I was about to call it Uno Chaos. Uno Attack. And so it comes with a machine. And instead of having the deck, you know, you manually pull, you put, you load the cards into this machine, right? So if you get a draw two card, you hit this button twice and you don't know how many cards it's going to shoot at you. It could be zero. It could be 10, but it that's how you cards. spawn a nuke. Oh, um, that's how you no. spawn a nuke. Baby. That's how you create a war in the crib. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. Hell. I cannot that wait. That's fun, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's really <laughs> fun. Um, yeah. So, uh, Danielle and Johan, right? So, it's been a month since we found out that he's been stealing from his wife. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and um, it's Christmas time. Um, he's dressed up as Afro Latino Santa. The Kranken or whatever the fuck that evil. <laughs> That evil yeah. Santa is called. Yeah, evil Santa, <laughs> evil dark side. What's it called? The Santa. Kraken? What is that thing called? Yeah, Hold Santo. On. I don't know. <laughs> Diablo. Yeah, evil Diablo Santa. Santa Christmas horror movie. Mm-hmm. Cause that's he is just Krampus. Yeah, yes. Krampus. Yeah, yeah, he is just a dark figure. Just. Over this whole season. Looming. Yeah. So, um, you know, and always evil people love charity because it makes it seem, <laughs> <laughs> it makes it seem I'm like they love evil. I'm passing out turkeys like Nino Brown. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Knowing damn well you killing the hood with your crack mm. in evilness. Mm. Um, and I say that to say, Johan had this wonderful idea of, you know, passing out gifts to kids in the hood. Mm-hmm. You know, he used his his TL celebrity mm-hmm. um, along with hers to fashion donations yes. from Americans, mm-hmm. and they paid the shipping costs. Yeah, to you know, and um, they got about forty donations worth of stuff. Yeah, you know that's that's a pretty big deal. No, absolutely. Um, you know, nothing to sneeze at. And so, you know, Danielle is weak and open 
And so she's all like, oh my gosh, you know, my heart is so open. Mi corazón is so soft Mi because pusazón. he is so giving. Yeah. Yes, because he is, you know, giving to children. This is the man I fell in love with Mary. Did you? Hmm. Now, see, I want us to really sit down and assess when we say things like, this is the man I married. I understand we all got multiple layers to our personalities and ourselves. Um, but if you got a whole Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde nigga who like, it's like when, when the nigga who comes in that you fell in love with is a completely different person than what you have been dealing with on the norm. I want us to reevaluate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah like, like what are we doing yeah there's one thing to have like stefan urkel and urkel yeah. and then there's another to have like dark skin michael jackson and white skin michael jackson because you know those are two different people yeah <laughs> they are yeah they, you know. yeah <laughs> Or Fat Luther and Skinny Luther. Uh, yeah, two completely <laughs> different people. Social Whether the Fat Luther numbers. Vandross and the Skinny Luther Vandross are two different mm -hmm. people. Jennifer mm -hmm. Lewis, a legend. Yeah. Two niggas, two different niggas. Yeah. Um, so, you know, in the middle of all this, you know, they're sitting by the tree, mm -hmm. trimming it and such. And so, you know, she asks him, she asks him about La Renta for January. Mm -hmm. um, and he was like, como? <laughs> Not la flor, okay? Yeah. So he was like, oh, I don't have it. And she was like, well, you told me that you could pay 75,000 pesos, which I don't know how much that is. I'm sure it's very, very nominal compared to what she pays. I'm sure he only pays like 150 bucks a month where she pays the load. So, and not because I'm counting, I'm talking about poverty. I'm just talking about how shiftless this nigga is, right? So, he, uh, he claims that he's not being paid enough. But he's also expressing what he continues to express the last three episodes about how he has nothing and this is all her fault. 75,000 pesos, correct? Mm-hmm. $1,300. Oh, that's substantial. Yeah. That's substantial amount of money. So that means money. their rent is $2,600, which seems steep for... That does seem steep. However, I know they live in an expat community. Mm, okay, so yeah, they hiked that up. So gentrification is what they have done, or the what they are yeah, partaking in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's so, not. Uh, is, yeah, it's about twenty six hundred dollars uh, a month. Yeah. If 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 seventy five thousand is half, then that's then mm. she, then he's paying thirteen hundred dollars a month. Which is still cheaper than my part, but I, <laughs> but I um, but still I. Now I can that see I know where that hits how him much in the pockets, howsoever. Yes. Like what you thought was what you thought was getting ready to happen. And that's a rhetorical question because we all know. You thought mm -hmm. you was gonna come up in here and she was gonna take care of everything. And mm -hmm. that was how it was going to be for the rest of your Dias. That's what you yeah. thought was getting ready to happen. Because you never once suggested, hey. Let's go live at my mom so that we can stack some money and do this. You've never uh, clearly expressed like you you throw tantrums. He don't clearly. Oh, my express. gosh. I wrote I wrote tantrum. He's like a big He's fucking a four year old. And mm -hmm. the fact that this nigga got obstinate and was like, I'm not paying shit. I'm tired of paying shit. I ever since I've been with you, all my money goes to rent and renting cars. Mm -hmm. And that's not what I signed up for. I, I was living at my parents' house and I was making money and I was doing just fine. Didn't have no intention of ever leaving. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Which, listen, culturally, if that's the thing, then then cool. But like, why'd you marry me? <laughs> but both of them, both of yeah. them, you all did not clearly have this, this communicate. You had this whirlwind love. You, Miss mm -hmm. Mama, decided to quit your good DOE job, had you a teaching job here in New York, and you decided to quit that because you said, I want to go be in love in DR 
And I don't, I, 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 for, for somebody who's where the cost of living is not equal to what, what's happening here and the dollar is not equal and you got somebody paying $1,300 a month who went, who was not paying that before they were contributing to their whole family. I am not letting him off the hook because the way that he acted was absolutely disgusting. But what I am irritated about is their lack of, of clear communication and how this was really going to look. And that's how it got so ugly because y'all didn't di discuss the important things. And then also mm -hmm. he's a nasty disease, but well, yeah, you all did not clearly and effectively have communication that was going to lay things out in, in the way that they were actually going to be. No, not at all. And he flat out says, oh, I'm not paying this and I'm done. And she was like, so we're ending this relationship. He was like, yeah, I'm tired of your crap. And he literally breaks up with her on Christmas. <laughs> and it was really fucked up because he was like, you ain't done shit for me. Which that should never be the thing in a relationship. Right. But she started listing off the shit that she was like, what do you mean? Like you, you wanted to, to. Does he take Zumba or teach Zumba? <laughs> I, would I think it was for him to become Zumba certified. Okay. So she was like, I paid for your Zumba. I bought you a computer so you can do the things you need to do. Like, what do you mean? He's like, you ain't done shit for me. All I've done is put up with your shit. And I'm done putting up with your shit. I am giving you another fucking time. I was like, God damn. This nigga mm -hmm. is cold. Is he an Aquarius? Mm -hmm. I wonder. Mm, he might be. What's his? Let me. Yeah, yeah. You you look that one up. You look that one up. <laughs> yeah. Hold on. What's his name? Johan. Johan, ninety day fiance 90 the other way. Birthday. Fiance. Dominican Republic. Johan Geronimo. He may not be. Uh, oh, he could be a Virgo man. Let's see. Facebook profile. Oh, she not even on his shit. On of his Instagram. Not. Let's see what's on his Facebook profile. Um, it means they broke up. Family, basic male. What is his birthday? Damn. <sighs> Starcasm, you don't have it. Let's look. Oh, okay. Here we go. Here we go. Birthday, 1990. He's 33 years old. Oh, he's a Capricorn. Mm, devil hooves. Mm. That's why he be digging his shit in. <laughs> I say he could be a Virgo man. Earth. Mm, yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that explains his but, stubbornness. But Capricorns usually like to work. And uh, <laughs> I will say that they usually have work really nerve. good. They usually have good work ethic. I guess the work ethic could be on a nerve. I never considered mm. that as an occupation. <laughs> this nigga is mean. Like no other. He's mean. He's cold. He's heartless, and he's evil. And I ain't never and like. I ain't never thought I was gonna say that in defense of no white woman, but he is. Yeah. He is. Normally, I'd be like, that would be that's that's commendable right I'd be However, like, Par for the course <laughs> yeah <laughs> but she's been nothing but um de delusional and devoted to him so i, <laughs> I think that's a, i think that is a fair assessment mm -hmm. she is yeah. because you up and moving the way that you did delulu delulu boots yeah, she thought her Delulu would be her Salulu, and mm -hmm. she is sadly mistaken. Mm -hmm. It's going to get um, next week. Oh, yes, when we um, see um, <laughs> domestic violence on television, <laughs> because that's exactly what that was. <laughs> Wait, did he touch her? You don't her? take... Didn't he push her when she tried to take the dog? Oh, I might have missed that. Because I, I was like, are they fighting on camera, like... Because, mind you, I was half asleep watching, and so I, ro I rose up. I was like, wait a minute. No, like, mm -hmm. why would they show that on camera? Even if it was just that small. But then it's even emotionally abusive. Why are you taking her dog? And she's, like, screaming No, and that's crying. nasty like, work. That's nasty work. That's so bad. And then that lady is this tall, you this tall. Yeah. Like, Yeah. Sorry. Mm. <laughs> Either way, we'll see them next week. Yeah. Or the week after. 
This is on YouTube, so I have to. <laughs> yeah. <be cautious> of... <laughs> um... All I will say is for commentary is that I understood Kimberly completely. That is all I can say. Okay. <laughs> as a black woman. Yeah. Me as, too. As, a, <laughs> as an earth sign. <laughs> you as well. Um, yeah, babe. As a germaphobe. Mm-hmm. And just as a nigga who lives and breathes. I was. <laughs> yeah. I was I was real stressed watching this. Now, okay, so uh, the wedding is finally <laughs> six weeks later. S- six weeks later, it is done. Yeah. Um, and TJ is moving his things upstairs. You know, he probably just need to nurse one more night. You know, they all sleep together. So, I am trying to understand. I don't know if Yash is there as like a buffer. For, Ling- linguistically or what his role is but yash is in the mix um Ross, yash don't have business to stand on have, or, this is yash's or, business to stand like, on. clearly like, he, like i i thought about this i was like why is he a part and i'm like because tj gotta go to work and so I'm like, so what does yash do get on niggas nerves no it's you know true. another earth sign and also, one, I'm like, does TJ have some kind of agreement? Like, if I die, you marry Yash. Like, she will blow everything up. But anyway, so, you know, Yash and and their mother are going to sit down and explain to T, uh, explain to her what uh, her new duties are. So they sit down, and mother is laying down all the new rules. You know, says some things about to change around here. I know you ain't used mm-hmm. to all that, but you're going to get used to it. Um, mm-hmm. And then <laughs> TJ is translating very softly the things that his very, mother. Very, very loose. Not this loose booty ass translation <laughs> that you are giving. <laughs> because in normal circumstances, Kimberly would have fought everybody in that fucking room. However, <laughs> TJ sugarcoated like I don't know if he just like he poured sugar all over her dick and like it yeah. was just like yeah. it was just so yeah. yeah. So you know she's being agreeable. She's like, okay, all right, okay. Now when it came to the washing the dishes, she was like, well, if I'm cooking, then you washing the dishes. So I don't even know why we need to have this conversation any further. And he was like, oh, well, sometimes you will wash the dishes every time. Um, so, you know, she's like, I'm disgusted by dishes. So mom goes, she's soft as fuck. Like, fine, she can sweep the floors or whatever. So the conversation was pleasant enough. She even asked mother to teach her how to make TJ's favorite Indian dish and several other dishes because she actually has a respect for the culture. Shocked Mm -hmm. to see it. I'm not going to hold you. But she actually does. And we have all seen over the past three years as they've been preparing for this wedding and having it that she has been nothing but ready to do whatever it is that needs to be done. She just want to know. And nobody would tell her. And nobody would tell her. And so I always feel bad because for one, the one few time where somebody, a white person is genuine and earnest in trying to learn the culture and not be disrespectful or, Mm -hmm. or appropriative or anything. And she wants to make her nigga happy. That's also a thing too. And they are just, you silly white American girl, you know, I don't give a Please fuck. Please skip off you with know? your onions and garlic. Please. Yes. It's it's the the act of hate, even though, you know, they are a pleasant people. They just actively hate her. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, it's... it's mm. Now, after all this is said and done, and it's like, okay, you understand? Great. Okay. You know, tomorrow we we arise, not too early, 6 a.m. Don't worry about it. So they go upstairs to their house, and she sits TJ down. 
And she's like, and she's, she doesn't, she's not combative when she does it either. But she was like, um, so she didn't even say, how come you didn't tell me about none of this? Mm -mm, even more so. I asked you about all of this before we got married and you told me don't worry about it. And now I got two to be worried ways. about it. <laughs> mm, that's I, two different ways of approaching it. So, and she did it the right way. The right way. She's like, I asked you ahead of time about these roles and responsibilities, especially with cultural differences. Mm -hmm. And you told me, uh-uh, honey, it ain't, nothing, it, ain't, it ain't nothing to even think about. Don't you even worry about it. Things going to run differently in our household. And TJ, with his... When I would tell you, I wanted to smack the smile off his face. He's like, oh, yes, but I hit it because it was the right thing to do. She's like, no, nigga, it was not no, the right nigga, thing to that's do. That's the worst thing to do. He's like, well, you know, I, had I told you, we might not be here. So you took my choice away. And what would Brittany say in Love After Lockup? Control. Okay, except there's no drugs here. <laughs> so, no. you know, he's like, I'm doing a good thing by hiding these details. <laughs> and she's like, you did an awful, horrible thing and set me up for the okie doke, nigga. Like, you really, you really set me up for some shit. Literally. Mm -hmm. Because in the Knowing next scene. Knowing your mama don't really like me. No, or your brother. And I don't know where your father is. <laughs> sometimes he's there, sometimes he's not. But... The next scene, he really did set her up for some shit. So really? Yash is in his second home making repairs for his <laughs> future wife, setting up the temple and, you know, doing all the things. And then she's going to learn today how to make TJ's favorite dish. And they're going to come upstairs and they're going to do it in her and TJ's kitchen so she can cook in her own kitchen. Howsomever. Before you can cook, you must bless the space. We've all smudged. They also smudge, but with cow dung, because we all know that in Hindu culture, cows are holy. Mm -hmm. So they smudge with, they, they, they take the cow dung, they put it in a bowl, they lit it on fire, and they literally smudged. And then, they blessed the doorways with cow pee pee. It was a mm -hmm. water bottle of dark. It looked like Jew. <laughs> <It was> like, <laughs> I was like, mm, that should go on top of some roast beef. <laughs> oh. yeah, that should be reduced mm. into a, <laughs> <laughs> to a glaze. Yeah, to a divvy glass. <laughs> Can you? Well, it actually kind of <laughs> almost was because, yeah. you know, Kimberly is, she is maintaining herself, but she is having a quiet conniption. <laughs> and I think it even got overwhelming for them because mom was like, light the incense. <laughs> but yes. they're, just, and, and, and again, nobody is really fully explaining to her. What is going on? Yash will, you know, bark a, a, a thing over for a second. This is to bless. This is for, me, this, is for this. But they're not. Anti antimicrobial. 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 That's all he kept saying. Yeah. Which. Which huh. Yes, scientifically. No. <laughs> Hygienically. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then, so after she has her quiet condition, and this was... Because his mama told was, her to shut the fuck up. very American. She was like, TJ! TJ! TJ, get in here now! TJ! And Yash kept getting irritated and kept saying, and his mama was like, shut the fuck up. She caused too much commotion. <laughs> she, she talks It'll too damn much. discord in the home. She's like, she's so fussy. Yeah. So here comes TJ. What's up? Because right when they was getting ready to cook, after they after they smudged and all that, mom takes the rag and wipes the spot where the cow poopies was burning. And then mm -hmm. mom's wipes off the walk. <laughs> and that's when she lost 
<laughs> so when TJ comes, yeah. she's like, your mother wiped the cow shit and then she wiped the walk. <laughs> and even TJ was like, yeah. bitch, did you wipe the counter and then wipe the walk? And the mother's like, what's the big fucking deal? Nigga, you still alive? I've been doing this shit your whole 32 years. And he's like, ah, no, this is not about her being fussy. That is nasty, bitch. That is just nasty. He's like, don't nobody want the cow poopies in the, in the fucking food. Don't nobody want that. And mother, she don't like to be told nothing. Nothing. She's a piece. Uh, she's a piece of work. She's a piece of work. See where Yash get it from. Oh, what? That he is his mother's child. <laughs> That's why he's the fave. <laughs> exactly. Cause they mm. or and they probably fight real bad too, those two. You know they do. They get along really mm. well and they fight real bad. So mm -hmm. you know, she they they're they're getting ready to make all the things, and this is when Kimberly is like, okay. She's like, you know, um, I've been real accommodating around this bitch. Like, I came over here. You know what I'm saying? I did the wedding. I didn't put up nut. I'm I, I'm doing everything y'all want. I'll worship. I got the temple in the crib. Y'all want me to feed Krishna before you know we do everything else. That ain't no problem. But I'm about to lay down the motherfucking law <laughs> because mm -hmm. there's some shit that I just I'm not getting ready to bend all the way to the po point where any remnant of my culture is completely erased from this equation. Like we did enter this in a co-cultural manner and this was all consensual on both sides. And that does right. not mean me abiding to everything and nobody doing anything to respect anything that comes from my culture, which LOL to, you know, <laughs> yeah. but also, <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 true. There you there's got to be some kind of like some kind of compromise. Ground. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Yep, that was them. Shekinah and Sarper, uh, Miss Nikki Baby and Derek Zoolander. <sighs> um so he goes to meet with his parents. Mhm. Mm and um, apparently the night before, um, they, meeting him and White Shekinah, mm -hmm. had went over to his parents' house and she met them for the first time. You know, everybody was, you know, greeted warmly. They all seemed to like each one another. And it was, it was a good night. Mm -hmm. And um, they like her. You know, they're like, yeah. oh, she's, you know, she cool American girl. You know, she pretty, you know, whatever. I'm so, I'm so fast. I'm, I'm curious to know. I know people think we're rude. I've heard that one. I know people think sure. we're loud. I've heard that one. But th sure. I think this might be the first time that I've heard American, like a, an automatic expectation that we're cold. I was like, oh, I didn't, I didn't. Is that what we give? <laughs> no, that's what our government gives. But is that what we give? <laughs> I thought that was I thought that was ironic more than anything because I'm like, Sarper isn't the warmest person. He's like, <laughs> like he shows warm attributes. Like you know, <laughs> even like, at you the know very top I mean? of this, he was like, last time I talked to her about child, and she tells me, no, I don't want. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, oh, I enjoy him so. I enjoy him so much more than I ever thought that I would. <laughs> yeah, I really do. Because it's like you see him being. Yeah, there's warm attributes there. There's <laughs> and there's some you know warm qualities there. Right? <laughs> so, you know, he tells them like, "Hey, you know, I know you like her and stuff, but she don't want to have a baby." And. Of course, his parents have antiquated views on women and children. Yeah, yeah. They feel as though, you know, like, if you love somebody, why wouldn't you want to have their baby? What do you like, mean? As a woman, that's your duty. Did, to did you tell her that you sure. want a baby? You did? Okay. And she said no? <laughs> what? Right. Like, they, they feel as they have 
this view that, you know, a woman's duty is to just bear children. And that's what a womanhood is surrounded by, <laughs> bearing yeah. children. Oh, boy. We don't have time to unpack that one. So, <laughs> he planned on proposing to her. And he was like, well, what's the point now that she don't want to have a baby? Like, the what's the point of gone. our future? The thrill is gone exactly, away. Exactly, gone away. So, you know, he plans a date to um, Hamam, which is a Turkish bathhouse. And she's just Ugh. in her Delulu, and she's thinking like, oh, you know, we are going to have a good date, and hopefully he just drops this child issue. Little does she know that he's about to spawn a nuke in three minutes. But also, like, if somebody says, <laughs> I've really been sitting with this, I'd like to have a child, and I really want to have a child with you, and you say, no, I don't want to have like, any more no. children. <laughs> You think that is the end of the conversation <laughs> and you're never going to have another one? And the person dropped it right. as if they told you they want a burger for the night and you said you want Mexican? Right. Like, <laughs> In my head, that's what it should be, right? If I'm the woman, right, I should have the ultimate say because, nigga, who's doing the Whoever, work? Who, whoever is carrying that child. Yeah, right. So in her mind... I understand, but this nigga don't let shit go, and that comes up, right? So he's like, at, they're on the date, and they're sweating and shit or whatever in the sauna, and he's like, so remember like 12 hours ago when you said you didn't want to have a baby? <laughs> How sure are you about that? <laughs> and, and he's like, She's like, no, I, I, why is this a thing? I've, we've talked about this. I've told you, I, I don't want to have a baby because of some shit I had to deal with in my past. He was like, oh, I get it. You don't know me. So why? So I get it. You have to get to know me more. I get it. And, and in his mind, he keeps saying what she kept ignoring was, I'm not asking for a baby today. Mm -hmm. He didn't say that. He was like, just for you to open your mind and see in the future, mm -hmm. that's a possibility. However, he doesn't realize that his lady of interest is of a particular age. And so she doesn't have much time left to have to make this conscious decision. Both of them are. They Healthily. But Him too, because he's... He's he 43. Same age as her. No, yeah, he's two years are... older. But... Oh, well, even worse. See, happen, so... But... I but even say, still, like, I'm not trying to be 60 and, like, having, like, go into a graduation. You are at this rate. Uh, hell, I am at this rate. Um, uh, college or high school, that's different. But you know what I mean? Like, starting, I can't, I can't imagine starting over raising a baby at 40. Yeah, I, I might. Oh, okay. Sorry, girl. No, it's fine. <laughs> you, you don't have to yeah. imagine it if you're not going to yeah. do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I don't want to imagine it. But I, you know, this is also, I don't just say, I don't want a second baby. And then done with conversation. We, 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 we discuss it as a family. Also, mm -hmm. we are in this. Now, is it ultimately my decision? Hell yeah. Hell, mm -hmm. hell yeah. And that's never up for debate. But I'm also not such a cold bitch where I'm, where I'm like, well, it's my decision anyway. So, hey, <laughs> hey, niggas. No, I'm I'm in a I've chosen to be in this you know thing. So, mm -hmm. I got to consider mm -hmm. the other person, at least listen to them. Then I make my decisions based off that on what ultimately is going to be best for me and my health. However, I did laugh. Because before she went into what the tra the trauma was, it just it, it just sounded like you don't know what I've been through. I just like ended up being a single mom and it was so hard. <laughs> and I was, I was like, yeah. Yeah. yes, a single motherhood is hard. I'm not, that is, I'm not scoffing at that. I'm laughing because it more so sounded just like, yeah, I had to be a mom and it was traumatic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, ah, uh, it was sprung on her. But and, she went you know. into a little more detail and the triggers come from the, 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 her, child's father saying all the things Sarper is saying. I'll always be here for my child. I'll never leave my child. 
I will always be here to take care of my child. And while he did so financially, he didn't do so physically. Um, mm-hmm. And that does create a lot of stress and strain for, I guess she was probably, what, in her 20s when she had her with her child? Yes. Her, like, late mid 20s. to late. Yeah. So, you know, I can understand where it's like, yo, I was set up for the okie doke. And now I, I don't want to be set up for the okie doke again because all of the things that are coming from you are things that I have already heard before and I've been through this situation. There's a way to discuss that without being like, fuck you, nigga, don't talk to me for the rest of the goddamn day. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I, I, laughed, <laughs> I laughed at him too because he was like, I know what this is. This is karma. This is my karma. Because I have yeah. sex with 2,500 women, so this is my karma. And she's like, I told you I won't hear about your nasty dick activities no more. And he's like, what? I had sex with 2,500 women, you know? And I am coming to reconcile this is my karma. And she was like, I'm unsubscribing from this conversation, which is probably the most Los Angeles thing I have ever heard her, heard her say. Ever. Yeah, or millennial thing like that. <laughs> millennial, like that was the most LA transplant. Yeah, yeah, that was. I'm yeah, unsubscribing from this conversation. Yeah. All the all while he's having a meltdown. Yeah, you know he is having an internal about a child, an external about a child, and like yeah. I understand this whole like I don't want my name to die with me. I get it. <laughs> So I get and how he, somebody's he's already not torn get up because this. you're right. He's already torn up because he has a child that he can't find, and you see it's ripping him up inside, and he don't know how to yeah. deal with that, you know, yeah. or even how to start looking because I know that's what he truly, truly wants, you know, to find this son that he has. Yes, absolutely. You know, but, I don't even think it's about having a new baby. I think it's really about having. That connection. Having a child mm-hmm. and a connection that a lot of his peers and shit have. And, and you hear that a lot too, right? Like, I want to have a baby because, not because. And he said it. He goes, I I never, yeah. I actually never thought I would want a child. And I never met anybody that I would ever wanted to have a child with. He goes, <laughs> but his like sharper realizations <laughs> there. He's like, I never thought I'd meet women. And I tell her I want to have a child with her. And she tells me no. <laughs> yeah, he's never he's never he's also never been rejected before. No. And and he's well, let me say he's never been rejected by a woman before. And that makes him I think you were right the first time. Okay. <laughs> and that and that makes him a little woo about certain things. What do you what do you mean you're saying no to me? What? And yeah. and he thinks yeah. all the work he's cause he, he's like you see all my efforts. I've been trying. I'm working hard. And she's like, you are. I see it. I still don't want no baby. Mm-hmm. He's just genuinely like perplexed and confused at his bare minimum efforts <laughs> um, aren't <laughs> what seen do you mean? as maximum. I've made one whole post on the main feed. And you mm-hmm. you don't want to have no baby and he with thinks me. that <laughs> love you for life. Yeah. Like, Very crazy. we can share each other's social. Like that's crazy. Just because I showed you love on the main grid, that's wild, bro. <laughs> oh, I enjoy. I told you, I enjoy him. Yeah. I want them to stick around just off the strength that I need more Sarper. I need more Sarper moments. Yeah. I did not yeah. think I was gonna enjoy you him know, like that. You know who I? What show I would enjoy him on? What Matt Sharp Entertainment show? Marriage at First Sight. Oh yeah. <laughs> I think he would be. We should cover that again. I we? was we gonna say go I kind of, but it remember it got kind of like after, after Page and and uh, Subway sandwiches, it was kind of like yeah. You know she got she's having a baby. She um she found her a new nigger and she's moved on and you know and I love to see it. I, moving I, on, no Maya, you know. And I hope he. I hope the bottom of his shoes are wearing low. <laughs> I wish nothing good on him. <laughs> yeah. But um that's that's it for today's recap of 90 yeah. Day Fiance the other way. We will be back after the holiday. Yes. To talk about more and hopefully um we'll be in the reunion by then. So. <laughs>
it's just a week, friend. I know you be trying to rush to the end of this, but <laughs> there do, this don't need to be twenty episodes a season. Like we didn't need this particular episode. I agree. Like I'm, they could have combined. I'm sure what next week's episode is going to be like with Danielle and Johan. That could have all wrapped up. Could have got us a good hour and a half. You know, two yeah. hours. You know, hour and a half with no ads. Yeah, that's. That's another thing. They're so some timey with the hour and the two hour and the hour episode. It's the and it'll be like for me. I'm be honest with you. Yeah. <laughs> Pick a wall, boots. You know. <laughs> we'll see you all in two weeks. Yep. Happy holidays. Bye. <laughs>